Hi there, class. It is July 8th for ENG for you summer school. So, uh, yesterday you were supposed to hand in your first reflection assignment. Hopefully you have already done that. Uh, if you haven't, then please submit it as soon as possible. Remember, you don't want to fall behind in this class. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about our second reflection assignment, right? Which is also going to be uh, due today, right? So you handed in one yesterday and you're handing in another today. So the second reflection assignment is going to be about uh, the recent assault rifle ban. So before I talk about that, though, let me just talk briefly about MLA. So I posted a video about MLA uh, yesterday, right? It's an older video, right? We'll be coming back to MLA in some detail next week. But for now, uh, in terms of your formatting, uh, please put your paragraphs into 12 font, double spaced, times new Roman, and one inch margins, right? So just uh, for clarity's sake, so that it's easy for me to read. And the most important thing when you submit things, submit your material through Google uh, Documents or Microsoft Word, right? Do that. Do not give me PDFs, right? Because uh, as you'll see when I hand your stuff back, which will hopefully be soon, uh, I don't, uh, I can't make comments on PDFs, right? I can't do that. So give it to me through either a Google document or Microsoft Word, right? Don't give me a PDF. All right. So uh, today's question is uh, about assault rifles, right? And it should already be on the classroom. Hold on. So what you'll do, just like usual, is you'll go to the assignments tab right over here. You'll click on that and you'll see over here reflection assignment number two. And that's what you're interested in. Right, so we'll click right there, right, and let me just show you the instructions. And the question is going to be about uh, some more recent events in Canada. This time not COVID-19, uh, but rather what happened in Nova Scotia with the shooting uh, that happened back in May, right, and Justin Trudeau implementing a military-style assault rifle ban, right? The specific question is, in the wake of the recent mass shooting in Nova Scotia, Justin Trudeau has implemented a ban on military-style assault rifles and committed millions of dollars to buy the guns of all Canadians that possess such weapons. Do you agree with his decision? Why or why not? So that's your question there, and I've posted some articles for you to take a look at as well as you formulate your answer. But uh, I actually made a video of this previously, so... I'm going to let long-haired Faisal take over for a moment just to talk about this issue. Uh, Nova Scotia uh, last month had a mass shooting uh, where 22 key people were killed by a man who was well prepared to do this apparently uh, and who went around a neighborhood for some hours even shooting everyone he could. He had all sorts of equipment, including a fake police car, which was rather unusual. But this shooter, he murdered 22 people, random people, just another spree shooter. Uh, and the guy had four guns, apparently. One of them, investigators have found, was bought in Canada. And three others were apparently gotten from the United States. Um, and this is a guy who, by the way had previously been arrested in Canada uh, for assault and who no one really has figured out what his motivation was. I've seen speculation that it was related to girlfriend or money or something, right, with this guy's uh, situation. But regardless, the guy was a murderer and he killed 22 innocent people for apparently no reason. And right now in Canada... Uh, there's been a response, right, uh, to the shooting, right, where we as a country are sort of trying to decide what to do. So, uh, the response has come at the highest level, and I've got a special guest here right now, Mr. Justin Trudeau, who's going to tell us what, ca what Canada is doing after this, this terrible shooting. Last week... 22 Canadians were killed in the deadliest rampage in our country's history. 
They were nurses and teachers, correctional officers and RCMP officers. They were someone's child, someone's best friend, someone's partner. Their families deserve more than thoughts and prayers. Canadians deserve more than thoughts and prayers. Today, we are closing the market for military-grade assault weapons in Canada. We are banning 1,500 models and variants of these firearms by way of regulations. These weapons were designed for one purpose and one purpose only, to kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time. There is no use and no place for such weapons in Canada. So, effective immediately, it is no longer permitted to buy, sell, transport, import, or use military-grade assault weapons in this country. To protect law-abiding gun owners from criminal liability until they can take steps to comply with this new law, there will be a two-year amnesty period, and we will legislate fair compensation. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. So, uh, just to summarize that, what the Prime Minister has decided to do is essentially ban assault rifles here in Canada. Uh, these are the large guns that are typically used by the military. He's got 15,000 uh, types of assault rifles that he's going to ban, and they will now be illegal to possess in Canada. Right, So you can no longer sell them, buy, buy them, first of all. And if someone has a gun like that already, right? So if someone owns a gun like that, the federal government is going to buy it back, right? And the idea here is to reduce the number of guns in our society and prevent things like what happened in Nova Scotia from happening, right? So that is the uh, idea here, right? Is to help reduce the number of guns in our society uh, by essentially banning these assault rifles. Now, uh, that's what Justin Trudeau wants to do, but he has met with some pushback, most notably uh, in Ontario from our own premier, Mr. Doug Ford. And uh, I have a special guest right now, Mr. Ford, please explain your position. Premier, I'd like to ask right. your reaction to yesterday's announcement by Prime Minister Trudeau and several cabinet ministers regarding firearms. Alberta Premier Jason Kenney has said that uh, what they've done is singled out law-abiding Canadians who purchased their property legally, have owned these items safely for years and have committed no crimes. He went on to say that money would be far better used to pursue the smugglers and drug gangs that plague our society. Yeah. Given that the feds are talking about $600 million dollars, um, and that's the opening bid, to buy back these guns, to enforce all of this. What could you do with Ontario's portion of that $600 million to actually deal with the crime guns that are plaguing our society? Well, uh, good, good question, Brian. First of all, I want the people of Ontario to know that uh, our government will not tolerate, I'll tell you, they will not tolerate any gun crime of, of any, any kind, not now, not ever. And... Uh, all out of all people, myself, I know our Solicitor General behind me, we have zero tolerance for violent criminals. And I've made it uh, my mission as, as Premier to target the thugs and the lowlifes that are out there terrorizing innocent people. Over the past two years, uh, we've invested heavily. Uh, we've worked hand in hand with our law enforcement, which we support and we absolutely love our law enforcement, to tackle guns and gangs at its core. That, that's the problem. And as law enforcement experts have highlight, highlighted uh, time and time again, the only way to truly tackle gun violence is to crack down on the illegal uh, guns being smuggled in daily at our borders. Put money at our borders. Our our great, uh, uh, you know, people that serve the border security, Canadian border security, they're incredible. Give them the money, and greatly uh, in, increase the the legal uh, ramifications for these convicted gun crimes. Uh, I've said this over and over again that, you know, the, these people they they get charged, and what's frustrating to police officers 
uh, they're back on the streets in a few days. Or if they get sentenced, they get sentenced with a gun crime for a year or two. The problem is not the legal gun owners. Uh, we need to target the smugglers, and we need to throw the buck at these gangsters out there terrorizing our streets. And the, and the federal government has set aside hundreds of millions of dollars to buy back illegally purchased guns from licensed, uh, legal licensed gun owners, responsible legal licensed gun owners. Uh, and, and I can't help but, but think that that money could be put in, in a much better use uh, hunting down the violent criminals and, and stopping illegal guns at our borders. And I'm here and ready to, to work with our, our federal government and our par and partner up with them and uh, to work with them to stop the guns coming in from across the border. And uh, number one priority is, you know, let, let's really strengthen the, the bail conditions. Let's strengthen the, the sentences rather than uh, give them uh, these nasty criminals, these gangbangers, a slap on the wrist and they laugh at our police. Let's start giving them some tough sentences. Throw the key away with these people if they get caught with guns. Don't give them a slap on the wrist and then try to point the finger at legal, law-abiding gun owners and spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of hard-earned taxpayers' money uh, for, not, for what? Do you think the gun violence is gonna, is gonna go down in Toronto? Well, I, I don't believe it's going to go down in, in Toronto based on taking guns off legal gun owners. Uh, what I do believe will drop the drop the crime and start throwing these guys in jails, protecting our communities, protecting our families and our kids from uh, these gangbangers. That's what's going to stop it. Thank you, Mr. Ford, for your words. So, to summarize what he just said, he thinks you shouldn't ban assault rifles. You just need to stop the smuggling of guns uh from america so he essentially thinks canadians should be able to own those big assault rifles uh with a license of course not just you know by walking into a store uh and he thinks that smugglers from the u.s and gang members with guns illegal guns as in not licensed uh should be imprisoned right and he thinks essentially justin trudeau is wasting money by attempting to do that right so our Prime Minister wants those assault rifles banned, while our Premier here thinks that they should be legalized, or should they should remain legal, and Canadians uh, should be able to own those, but you got to stop the illegal ones from the United States. Okay, thank you, long-haired Faisal. So, uh, going back to the question here. So, basically, I played you guys a video from both Justin Trudeau and Doug Ford there, to give you the sort of range of opinion there, right? You've got Justin Trudeau, who's saying military-style assault rifles uh, need to be banned, right? And he, in fact, has banned them, right? And has committed all these millions of dollars to buy them back. Whereas our premier, Doug Ford, right, disagrees and says, no, uh, those guns aren't the problem. We just have to focus on illegal guns, right? So that is what is going on uh, over there. Now... Uh, in your reflection, what I want you to do is to take a position, right? Essentially say, uh, yes, I agree that um, these assault rifles sh should be banned, or no, I don't agree, right? So you got to just sort of take a position, answer the question, right? In the same way that you did yesterday, right? So it's going to be about 250 words, right? Which is one page, uh, 12 font, double space. Uh, and it should have a topic sentence and everything like that. So make sure to uh, check the video from yesterday if you need a reminder about how to do these things. But hopefully this is second, the second of two, so you know how to do that already. And of course, I've given you some articles here that you can take a look at if you need some more information. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about citation because I think that a lot of you were uh, a bit confused about that. So let me let me talk about that briefly. So the first step is to, well, read the source that you want to look at, right? So let's say I'm looking at this search a source and uh, I want to, oh, by the way, this is from the assignment, right? It's the third link. Right, and I can see that, uh, you know, let's see what's something I want from this. 
uh, that Trudeau's saying that there's going to be an amnesty period to allow those who want to, uh, who already own these firearms to comply with the ban, right? If I want to put something about that in my article, right? So this thing right here about there's a two-year amnesty period. So uh, I would put that information in my own words, first of all, right? So according uh, to the new law, uh, the legal gun owners will have two years to uh, come to sell their firearms to the government uh, before they become illegal, right? So step one is I put it in my own words, right? Uh, when it comes to secondary sources, right, these kinds of sources like articles online about a topic, uh, you never want to quote them, right? You should only quote when you're getting someone directly involved, right? So I guess you could quote Justin Trudeau, for instance, but uh, you don't want to quote a secondary source. So I would start by doing that, right? Step one, put it in your own words. And then step two is to cite it, right? So... In this case, right, I hope you guys took a look at my MLA citation video that I put up yesterday. We'll be talking more about MLA citation uh, then. Uh, do note that uh, you don't have to cite absolutely everything, right? These reflections are meant to be personal reflections. So if you're just talking about what you think, you don't have to cite anything, right? But if you're pulling information out of an article, you should cite it. So in this case, it is by this guy, Tasker, or John Paul Tasker, right? And because this is an online source, I just put Tasker in brackets over there, right? So there's my citation. And then step three is what we call works cited, right? Uh, where at the end of your paper, right, you have a works cited page, right, uh, where you put that information. Like I said yesterday, uh, this website, Al Purdue, is very good for looking up how to do work cited, right? It's very useful for that. Uh, and I also very much like that site, uh, EasyBib. Here, let me show you. Uh, in fact, I'm going to keep recording as I do it. EasyBib. Let's go straight to EasyBib. And let's create citations, right? So I click Create Citation, Website, and I copy the link. Bing, bang, boom, search, right, cite that, and uh, it'll ask me, no, the, for some, sometimes this website messes up, right, so for instance, this website can't figure out that it's John Paul Tasker that did that, so John Paul Tasker, right, so if it doesn't, uh, if it's not able to find the author's name and the author's name is right there, then just give it the author's name, but there we go, and then we hit complete citation, and then it's going to ask me to watch an ad. Okay, hold on. I'm not going to watch an ad in front of you guys. Uh, so once that stupid ad has played, right, or if you're like me, just after a bit of time has passed, right, of nothing because you, you are smart and you use an ad blocker, right? So uh, if you don't have an ad blocker, you should get one. But nevertheless, uh, once that's done, right, uh, it will appear here and you'll just hit copy bibliography citation right and then you go and there it is right it will do it for you right which is kind of handy because you don't have to you know go through all of these rules on the owl so again i'm not too fussed about citation in this opening assignment because look this is your personal take if you guys can just tell me you know this is what i think about uh assault rifles bads because of this and this and this right, then that should be just fine. But if you do use outside sources, you should cite them, right? So if you're going to look up some statistics about, you know, shooting deaths in Canada versus America or something like that, then please cite them, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Uh, okay, so uh, that's your second assignment. It is due tonight before midnight. Uh, so please make sure you get that done and uh, you submit it in the exact same way that you submit the other assignment, right? Which is to say, you go to assignments here, right? You click on uh, the assignment right over there, 
right? And it'll show you rubrics and uh, instructions and everything like that. Then at the bottom, you just hit add a file and you hit submit, right? You could also, oh, this comment thing, I don't really know what it's for. I don't know why it's here. I guess you could just write the assignment in there. Actually, don't do that, right? Just put it in a file and put it there. Uh, I don't know what this comment thing is really even for or why it's here. I'm still sort of learning about this website. So just leave that part blank, right? Just add a file, right? Type it in Microsoft Word or Google Documents and put it in there. And remember, no PDFs. So uh, that is the long and short of it when it comes to this assignment. So uh, I hope that that's fairly clear, right? Just remember the three steps of citation. Put it in your own words, cite it, and then do work cited, right? So just make sure you're doing that and remember you don't actually have to consult secondary sources for this opening set of assignments so uh, if you have any questions i will of course be available in the virtual classroom uh tonight uh, or not tonight this afternoon at two o'clock and i will be happy to see you guys there until then thanks for watching and i will see you all next time